Hi, this is Roland's TR8S. And this little gem was created entirely with the new FM synth engines added to firmware version 2. The TR8S was originally designed to emulate Roland's classic drum machines, including analog modeling of the 606, 808, and 909, along with sample playback capabilities. The new FM drum synths give it an entirely new character, and version 2 also has a few more goodies. In this video I'll take a look at what's new, then look at how the 8S does things overall for those of you not familiar with it, walk through a few performance tips and tricks I used in making this little jam, talk about its overall pros and cons, and how the TR-8S competes with other drum machines. I'll put this kit and project on my Patreon if you want to explore it. Let's get started. Now, I usually start with a general overview, but since the TR-8S has been around for a while, I'll start with what's new in version 2, under the assumption that many of you know the basics of what this is about, but if you want an overview first, skip ahead to the overview section in the timeline and then come back here to get the specifics of what's new. Let's start with the FM drum synths and actual synths, FM synths in here. The thing that makes the TR-8S special compared to sample-only based drum machines even in version 1, is its drum synths, called ACB by Roland, analog modeling, the idea being that rather than go through dozens of kick, snare, or hi-hat samples that are pretty much set in stone until you find the one that's just right, you start with a mini synth that's in the vicinity of what you're looking for and take it from there to shape the sound the way you want it. So for example, I could change up this hat in a way that you just can't with samples. Synth-based instruments also tune much better than sample-based instruments. The version 1 drum synths in the TR-8S were focused on recreating the analog sounds in Roland's classics, mainly based on subtractive synthesis, though with some samples. In version 2, Roland added a whole new set of drum synths using FM synthesis. FM synths are notoriously hard to program, and the TR-8S goes around this problem by giving you a set of starting points kicks, snares, hats, basses, and so on, that you can then tweak using a single morph function along with tuning and decay like the other ACB models. Each different FM drum synth or synth sound is really three different presets that you morph between. So starting fully counterclockwise, if you set the control button to control morph, you get one sound, then as you turn it clockwise, you morph to a second sound, and then as you continue to the right, or clockwise, you morph to a third sound. Now this can be either a natural progression or go from one sound through craziness to a second one, and then even crazier, which is what you get with FM sounds. So sometimes these changes are subtle, sometimes they aren't, but you get these set of starting points and you can morph from one to the other. There's probably around at least one new FM machine or engine for each of the instrument categories. So if I go through the categories quickly, bass drum, snare drum, and so on, you can see the quote unquote old presets in here. Okay, the analog modeling, and the FM sounds have this little F next to them. And moving down the bass drum category, you also have the preset sample kicks. And you can load up your own samples, of course. Now there are quite a few of these FM machines or engines in here. It doesn't make sense, I think, to go through all of them and through all three morphs of all of them, but let's just sample a few. Some of these sounds may sound simple or like the analog models, but some of them get pretty wild especially in the in-between point, as the FM synth parameters morph from one to the next. That's when you start getting the predictable unpredictability of FM. 
Oh. And, and again, we won't go through all of these, but you can definitely hear the uh, the bell-like characteristic of FM, even in the in the kicks. So quite a few FM kicks, and let's move on to the next category, snares. I don't think there are a lot of FM snares. Dink and dunk. Let's take a listen to the toms. Again, circuit modeling, and then the FM presets are right after that. Now all the FM presets have tuning with the tuning knob, but if you're familiar with the 8S, it's easier to tune with the course function. In this version of the firmware, course isn't available as an option on all the initial drum types, but when we get into the effects and synth FM engines, you do get course or semitone tuning there. So those are some of the toms. Let's move on to the next category, rim shot. Okay. Moving on. Pipes. Again, pretty, pretty wild. And next category, hats, metallic, of course, should do well with FM. Those are the hats, let's move on to the next category. Symbols again. These are some of the analog models. But let's listen to FM symbols. You can definitely hear those harmonics in the in-between spots. And there are cleaner sounds on the edges. Other percussion sounds. Let's look for the FM ones. I'll skip past these. Okay, so these are the ones that you can tune with coarse tuning. So I could go in here, choose this, and then tune this by semitones. across four octaves. But I prefer to control morph for now. Okay, so instrument, detune synth. This one is definitely one of my favorites to morph through. sounds are what FM does well. Okay, let's keep going. Ghost chord. Nice. Yeah, each of these steps along the way can be its own instrument, its own tunable instrument. Listen to this more from this. to this, to this, it's quite extreme, from simple to complex, some of these play through very nice chord intervals along the morphing route, let's move on to the next category. voice category and yeah, skip ahead FM plug Not a drastic change there I 
All of these aren't tunable, like I mentioned earlier. With coarse tuning. Head, next category. FM bass. I covered most of everything in here. Oh, I missed the cowbell. Where's the cowbell? Okay. How could we do without a cowbell, right? That's pretty cowbellish. There's even a mad cowbell. So I think that's a pretty good taste of the new FM drum synths and FM synths in the TR8S. Let's take a look at what else is new. There are four new MFX or track insert effects. Let's maybe try them out on a uh, different style sound on a sample. And they are a saturator frequency shifter ring mod and spread. Let's take a quick listen to them. Now a frequency shifter isn't a pitch shifter, rather it's something quite different. It doesn't work like a harmonizer at all. It's just its own thing. It has a variety of uses like tuning non-harmonic sounds. Then there's a ring mod, which is good for uh, robotic-like sounds, metallic robotic-like sounds. That's It's different from FM. Then there's spread. The documentation doesn't exactly say what this does. It sounds kind of like a frequency shifter, but in stereo and at low rates, it can sound a little bit like a chorus. Then finally, there's the saturator, which has so many parameters, I'm not going to go through them now. There's pretty filtering, uh, and then drive, and then whole bunch of post filter options yeah it's um look at all that but yeah a nice effect that will give you fine grain control over different frequencies and saturation in different frequencies in your sound beyond the new effects extremely handy performance oriented reload functions were added Oddly, in the old firmware version, if you wanted to reload a pattern or a kit, you'd need to do that in the utility menu going in a few levels down, which was a serious performance disadvantage if you wanted to experiment with changes and quickly undo them. So if we go back to my original jam pattern, I completely demolished it with all these tests. Now, unfortunately, there's no shortcut that I saw to load a whole kit up, so you still need to go into the utility menu and then search for reload and go into kit and then hit enter and reload the kit and yes. But if you do mess with the knob positions, then you hit utility and kit. It'll reload the knob positions, which is comforting to know. Same goes for the pattern. So let's say this is my pattern and I wanted to go into my snares and just, uh, you know, Add a whole bunch of them. Utility and pattern select will reload the pattern. Same goes, by the way, for variation. You can reload a variation. You can also reload a specific track, reload a specific instrument, or reset a specific knob value. So you can mess with it and then easily go back home. So yeah, really nice addition. The only thing that I think is missing here is the option to reload a kit. Again, unless I missed it, utility kit will upload the knob values but not the instruments if you change them okay so that's what's new before we take a look at some performance tips and tricks and the pros and cons let's take a look at the tr8s overall for those of you not familiar with the details the tr8s is indeed as the label says oriented more towards rhythmic performance as opposed to a full-on groove box you can sequence melodies meaning pitch sounds up and down over time but its tracks can only play one sound or sample at a time and you need to program melodies using semitone intervals rather than notes aside from a hack which i'll show you in a bit what makes it special compared to sample only based drum machines 
is that it has multiple little synth engines built in, as we saw earlier, designed to emulate either FM synth behavior or the analog behavior of Roland's classic drum machines. These synths are oriented more towards percussive sounds rather than sustained sounds, but if you use its sample playback engine, there's a way to hold sustained sounds. And yes, the TR-8S can also play samples. There are over 300 preset samples built in, and you can load in up to 600 seconds of mono samples or 300 seconds of stereo samples. The TR-8S has 11 different tracks, each of which can be assigned to either an analog modeling synth, an FM synth, or sample playback. It can store 128 patterns. Each pattern contains eight variations or bars and two fill variations. And you can also chain variations of patterns to long patterns of up to 128 steps. On the effects side, it has two layers of effects, insert effects for each of the tracks, and then master effects, a reverb delay and single master effect. You can choose from one of a few. On the instrument side, we went through the new ones earlier. Uh, beyond that, there's high pass filter, low pass filter, combination high pass, low pass, boosting the highs or lows, isolator, transient processor, compressor, drive, compressor and drive, bit crusher, and then the new ones. On the master effects side, again, compressor, filters, boosts, isolator, transient processor, drive, overdrive, fuzz, crusher, phaser, flanger, sideband filter, and noise for those sweep transitions. There are a few reverb types, and a few delay types. You've got direct performance controls for time and feedback on the delays, which is nice. And there is an individual send for the delays and reverbs for every single track, which is obviously also very useful. The TR-8S supports the concept of kits, meaning that you can store pattern information, the sequence separately from the groups of instruments assigned to each pattern. And then you can later on swap the kits out while retaining the pattern information or vice versa. You can either sequence on the grid, or play live if you like, either just play or record. These pads aren't velocity sensitive. This is somewhat velocity sensitive. You can program either strong notes, weak notes with a shift. It may be a little bit hard to see these lights and you also have an accent function which applies to the entire step. Even though the pads aren't velocity sensitive, you can play them and you can record that live if you want as well. From a connectivity perspective, you've got USB for data, MIDI, and even multi-track audio, though this isn't class compliant, meaning you'll need to install a driver for it to work. You've got five pin MIDI in and out, an SD card slot for importing samples and backing up your patterns. A trigger output lets you hook up directly to Eurorack or other analog sync based instruments to either create a clock signal or manually sequenced triggers on their own separate track. The external stereo inputs let you process external audio through the internal effects, though you can't sample external audio. There are six assignable outputs which you can use to either route audio separately or they can be used as additional CV triggers. And finally, on the output side, you've got both quarter inch outputs and headphone outputs. So that's it for the overview. Let's talk about a few key features. Now this won't be a detailed tutorial, but rather a look at the overall operating environment. A lot of the TR-8S is very much knob per function, but there are also quite a few parameters hidden in menus which you access using the shift button. That said, the location of these parameters is fairly intuitive. So kit parameters are shift edit and kit, instrument parameters are here, sample parameters are here, master effects parameters are here. So you can find your way around relatively easily, but certainly you will need to be comfortable with going through menu items. And it is a bit cumbersome to select a parameter and then hit this button, edit it, go back and forth. There's only one knob. It certainly would have been nicer if there were more parameters on screen and more knobs like its bigger brother, the MC-707. A function that can save you from a bit of menu diving for the instruments is the control knob. This is assignable. You just hold this button and turn it and you can choose one of a few parameters that can be controlled with this knob. Again, it would have been nice if you could assign all three rows instead of just this one, but one is better than none, that's for sure. 
in terms of sequencing, like I mentioned earlier, you can either play live using the pads, play live using the velocity sensitive pad, or sequence TR style. You could set a pattern length overall using last step, or set a length for each of the different tracks individually, which is nice. The TR8S supports swing substeps, meaning ratchets or flam, but there's no micro timing. You can't shift a step forward or backward in time, again, other than ratchets, flam, or the swing. Things pretty much live on the grid. Aside from step sequencing for notes or triggers, the TR8S also supports parameter locking or motion sequencing. So if you hit motion recording on, I could say uh, change this. And you can turn off motion recording if you want altogether. And if you want, you can also step sequence the values for each individual step. So I could go ahead and take this and tune this to here and this to here and whatever I wanted. And then I'd get this crazy pattern. Now what's sequenceable is just the knob. So you can sequence tuning the decay and the control parameter, but it will only sequence the single parameter that you chose using control and select. So it's just one custom parameter per track. Aside from that, you can also motion sequence these knobs and the master effects on off. You can't sequence mutes um, or levels. All of these are just manual control. Sample controls are also fairly simple and straightforward. So I just go into the instrument and then scroll and either choose one of the custom samples, quite a few built-in ones, and you can load up your own. If you scroll all the way to the left, you've got the user import category. So you can load up all your own samples if you like. Sample editing functionality is fairly simple. You've got samples start and end, and there's these numbers to control them. So you don't, um, you, know, you don't have a, any onboard graphics with shift can go through the parameters faster. So you sort of have to feel your way through this to find the sample start and end points. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for sample editing facilities. You can, of course, tune samples chromatically up and down using the semitone controls, just like some of the FM sounds. Samples do get additional track parameters that the synth engines don't for some reason. You can see those over here, they get a uh, filter with cutoff and resonance control and its own filter envelope, which is nice. And there are also, like I mentioned earlier, hold options for samples so that you can extend them beyond just a single percussive hit. There's no option though for user sample looping, at least not one that I saw. Some of the, uh, the factory instruments do have looping and you'll see this L next to their name when they do, which means that you can extend them for as long as you want for the hold time, which can be any number of steps that you determine. Maybe it doesn't make sense for a, for a kick style sound, but certainly does for the instruments that are sample based. Okay, so that's it for the TR8S overall. Before we head out to the pros and cons, I wanted to share some performance ideas and tricks I used to make the intro and outro jam to this video. Number one is to get to know the mixer view, which you access using shift and control select. This gives you a bird's eye view to multiple parameters, which is fantastic. And not only that, you can change the individual parameters using these control knobs. So say if I wanted to edit my panning, I could just go ahead and change the panning very quickly like that for all the tracks. Let's move on to tip number two. The faders are obviously a great performance tool, but if you want to use them just to bring tracks in and out, it's easier to bring tracks in by just pushing the faders all the way up. Now that obviously doesn't let you set the relative levels for the different elements of your mix, which is why the gain control is really important. Each of the tracks has individual gain controls and you can modify that or customize that on a per track basis, either in the mixer or using the shift instrument menu. Tip number three, for some reason, by default, if you take an empty kit, the reverb and delay sends are all the way up and you may not want it that way. You probably don't many times. So these are just sends. There's no reverb or delay until you increase the overall reverb or delay levels. But once you do, the delay will only be applied to the tracks that have a delay send on them and same goes for the reverb. 
Next up, weak notes are your friend, right? So sequencing four on the floor is nice, but it's always nice to add a little ghost note here and there for some flavor. Next up, another friend you might wanna keep nearby is the master compressor effect. A nice way to even out levels across a mix. Check out the before and after on that. Next up, if you wanna play melodies, you can pitch your sound either by using the course tune parameter, but that'll take up a control or automation knob for you. You can still use the tune parameter to tune a melodic instrument up and down two octaves as opposed to four. The problem with tuning using the tuning knob as opposed to the course control is that course control gives you immediate control over semitones, so it's easier to find notes that way. This just goes from minus 128 to plus 127. I'll leave a link in the description to a site that has a table that lets you convert these values to semitones. Next up, spend some time getting to know the FM sounds. They're really little synths on their own with these intervals holding a lot of magic in them. Again, at least in my opinion, I certainly found inspiration with what I found in these different morph points you might too. Next tip, don't forget that you've got a filter for every track, so if the FM sounds get too harsh, which they sometimes tend to do, you can choose uh, yeah, any, any filter. Let's go for a low pass, high pass to go through the range. And uh, yeah, and just filter to taste either the higher frequencies or the lower ones. Next up, don't forget the LFO, choose it wisely. You only get one per kit, but you do get to assign it to different destinations, to a single but different destination on a per track basis. I like the random or sample and hold LFO, sample and hold right here, S and H, and I tempo sync it and set it to a rate of one step. This means that it will generate a different value on a per step basis. Now I can always go ahead into my mixer and see which instruments use the LFO. So one of the destinations I have the sample and hold or random LFO set to is the decay of my hi-hats, which makes them sound different every time I activate them, gives them a more natural feel. And I also pointed the random LFO to the pan position of my open hats so that they shift around from left to right. Again, every time they're triggered, I also set it to the decay time of uh, this sound very subtly, but just to make it a little bit different every time. And last tip, like I mentioned earlier, the TR-8S isn't a polyphonic synth technically, and you have to use these coarse knobs to, to play melodies, but you've got 11 tracks, so you can work your way around this problem by allocating a few tracks to specific notes. And I've gone ahead and prepared a kit for that, a kit which basically assigns these pads to notes, I still have four tracks for percussive notes, and you can allocate this any way you like, maybe just a pentatonic scale, but once you have these, you can play chords. Polyphonically, you can sequence this live. You can automate this entire scale or individual notes up or down with the motion sequence or with the parameter locking. So it's a bit of a hack, but if you wanna quickly sequence melodies or even play chords, it's a nice way to do it. That's it for my tips and tricks. Let's move on to the pros and cons. On the pros side, in terms of hands-on controls, the TR-8S has a lot to offer. 11 faders, 33 knobs, three per track. TR style sequencing, meaning separate buttons to select the tracks and then to immediately sequence the steps in those tracks. Eight easily accessible variations, two fills, which are basically their own separate bars that you can jump into either automatically or using a manual trigger, all with an interface that makes sense. And it's also no slouch for brains. Now with two main synth engines, analog modeling and FM, each with their own different mini synths that are very simple to use, as well as basic sample playback capabilities, separate assignable insert effects per track and three master effects, and a sound engine that at least in my opinion sounds excellent. The TR-8S is an excellent drum machine that can be stretched and extended into melodic and harmonic sequences as well. So what are the cons? It depends what you compare it to. On the sampling side, 
it only plays back samples. You can't sample on the device itself and sample chopping capabilities are fairly limited as is the sample memory around 300 seconds stereo or 600 mono, which is certainly adequate for percussive sounds, but don't expect to stream stems off the SD card. You can swap out the entire memory with samples on the SD card, which can hold up to 32 gigabytes, but load times are pretty slow. When compared to groove boxes like the MC707, its melodic capabilities are limited, the tracks aren't polyphonic. I think if Roland adds an easy way to sequence notes into tracks using either the pads or an external MIDI keyboard, it would dramatically improve the TR8S on the melodic side. As for the automation side, you only get three lanes of automation, aside from the effects. It would be nice if, like its bigger brother, you could at least assign different parameters to these two rows as opposed to having them only control tune and decay. On the modulation side, there's only one LFO and you can only assign it to one parameter per track. Again, limited compared to other products, though, like I mentioned earlier, there are separate filter envelopes for each of the tracks. It's nice that you can set track length on a per track basis, but you can't set relative speeds for the different tracks. In terms of overall hardware, the assignable outputs and USB audio are an excellent option to have. The build seems excellent and solid and there's no wobble anywhere. I mentioned earlier, once you do get to menu diving, it would have been nice if you could control more than one parameter at a time rather than just one value knob. Again, like it's bigger brother, the MC707. And last complaint on the hardware side, the offset between the pads, the instruments, and the tracks here, I don't know, maybe it's my OCD, it bothered me that they weren't aligned, so you can directly see what controls what, especially since this offset increases as you head on down the tracks. You get used to it, but it would have been nice had they been aligned. So that's pretty much it. Overall, as a drum machine, it's a ton of fun, giving you access to both vintage sounds and samples. The drum synth side means it's easy to fine tune the sounds you want, and with the new FM drum synth engines, the timbral palette of the TR8S has been significantly enhanced. And if you want more ideas on what to do with FM synths and LFOs, feel free to check out my ever-expanding book of electronic music ideas, tips, and tricks available to the good people who support this channel on Patreon. Hit like if this was useful. Make sure to ring the FM bell after subscribing if you don't want to miss the next one. Thanks for watching.